looking to reduce your energy bills? Global Eco Energy install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers with a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, and air source heat pumps. We offer bespoke solutions for a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options. Go to global-eco.co.uk and quote Solar 10 for 10% off your installation. Available until 30th September 2023. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go! Good evening, this is Paul Cooney with Andy Walker and Mark Guidi. You can call them now 0808 17 17 700. European football last week. This week it's the League Cup coming up tomorrow night and Wednesday after a weekend when 10-man Celtic had a comfortable win at Livingston. Joe Hart sent off for the first time in his long career. The next day, Rangers, they stay four points behind after the win at home against Motherwell. Deserves gets his first SPFL goal. But the manager, Michael Beale, says he's concerned by the performance. We're going on the lines in just a moment or two. Andy at the weekend, a win for Celtic. Ten-man Celtic, nine-man during the week. Uh, is this a trend now? I know it isn't, but it's unusual, isn't it? Three players sent off in three days. Yeah, I think what you're seeing, I, I just think what you're seeing is Celtic getting the job done. Yeah. And, you know, Celtic are going to improve. They've not been at their best, but they're still winning games to to increase their lead after going down to 10 men when they were 1-0 at the time. I think that is the impressive thing. And, of course, when you've got someone like uh, Maida who works his socks off, you've got a special player there. Looking at some of the headlines today, Mark, uh, Rangers staying tucked behind. Of course, your old club St Mirren still taking second top at the table, but we'll talk about them shortly. What about Rangers? The manager saying, I won't stand for this, the performance at the weekend. Yeah, the, the performance wasn't great, but, but Rangers won the game. And I have to say, I felt for the Rangers players, um, the, the, the Rangers fans who had stayed behind till full time yesterday, a lot of them booing the team off the pitch. And I thought that was very, very harsh. They had an excellent win on Thursday night, 1-0 clean sheet, followed it up yesterday with another win and a clean sheet. Yeah, the performance wasn't great, um, but I think, you know, if Rangers are going to have a chance of catching Celtic and ultimately winning the league, then, um, you know, there needs to be more uh, unity there, Paul. We, we spoke about it in the programme Friday night. Barry thought there's a connection back between the fans and the players. Mm-hmm. That didn't seem to be the case at full time yesterday. Rangers fans, what are you thinking? Give us a call. 08 08 17 17 700. Celtic fans, what do you feel? The goals from Hatate, the penalty, Matt O'Reilly, and then Maeda. What about that goal? Andy, right at the end, Dyson Maeda. Well, just his work rate, even when Celtic went down to 10 men, um, it's just so impressive. He's a real team player, and anyone playing alongside him will just appreciate the effort that he puts in. He's not a glory hunter. I mean, he scored a, a fabulous goal, but he's very much a team player, and I think that's what everybody appreciates. He has been compared by some with you, Andy, in your pomp. <laughs> You're nothing like him. <laughs> nothing no. like him. Uh, Listen, if he can score in cup finals the way you well, did. And I didn't get many of them yeah. either. And but uh, yeah, I think yeah. he's a special player. Let's go on the lines elsewhere. Yesterday, Aberdeen 4-0 against Ross County. Didn't see that coming, Andy. You were at that game. Mark, you no. surprised? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I thought Ross County would get a point at Petordia yesterday, Paul. So but credit to Barry Robson, these players as well on the on the, the back of a tough shift on Thursday night in Frankfurt. That was an excellent result. Dundee 2, Kilmarnock 2 on Saturday. Derek McKenna sent to the stand. <laughs> I'm only laughing because, yeah. come on, it was the last seconds of the game. Oh. His touch wasn't too good, though. That's no. maybe why. So he, enc- he encroached on the pitch. It wasn't the a ball did look out. The ball did look out. The ball did look out. Hibs 2, St. Johnson 0. Good win for... Them. And what about St Mirren? 1 0 against Hearts. So, Hearts question marks what's happening there? Huge game for them against Kilmarnock tomorrow in the Cup. Mm. But a big win for the Saints. A brilliant win uh, for St Mirren. You know, I think that's back to back. 1 0 wins. Uh, Paul Neils, it was at first part of the week before, possibly. Um, so, no, they're, they're looking really good. Credit to Steve, Stephen Robinson because he lost a couple of big players uh, in the summer's replaced him. Matt O'Hanna's back in the team, which is good. But to get, you know, a clean sheet. And the St Mirren fans are thoroughly enjoying themselves, Paul. They really are. And, and it's. It's great to see, but uh, for Hearts, not good enough, you know, by Hearts standards, um, their results so far this season, not good enough. I, I'm really enjoying watching St Mirren, enjoying yeah. watching Motherwell, so, I mean, Stuart Kettlewell has done a magnificent job, I know they got beat 1-0 at Ibrox yesterday, but the performance was good. Their level of performance, I think, is very consistent, consistently high, and uh, it's great to see uh, clubs like that, who've got very modest resources mm. It's great to see them being as entertaining as that, as consistent, like, given everything. 
and the gap between them and the, the big boys is, is absolutely massive but doesn't show on the pitch and well done Scotland in the rugby World Cup beating yeah. Tonga so well yeah. done to Finn Russell and the guys let's go on the lines first up we're going to go to a Rangers fan in a moment Gary Celtic fan is on the line in Glasgow good evening Gary evening guys how are we doing yeah good Hi, thanks Hi, what's, Gary. Your, what's your point tonight uh, obviously just to talk about the, the performance on Saturday uh, early, early doors at Livingston you know a place that they've struggled at in the past I kind of expected the same again to be honest obviously with the European hangover possibly of uh, during the week in Steenard but you know really professional performance despite the fact that it went down to 10 men not ideal I think it was a rush of blood that Joe Hart had um, that he, he came out I don't think there was any need for him to come out and I, I do think it was the right decision in a way because I know I, I don't know if they've put the, the red card down to last man or danger an opponent but if you're endangering the opponent, then yeah, it's absolutely the right decision. But I think Ian Crocker said uh, during the game that it might have been for last man, therefore you've got a case for it being a wrong decision. Andy, what do you think? I thought it was a red card. Um, I thought he he could have been out a bit quicker. Um, I know the, the, the bounce of the ball was maybe a bit slow. He's obviously misjudged it. But as soon as the challenge was made, um, I thought red card immediately. So I've got no complaints about that one. Mark, goalkeeper's union, would you say it was a bit unfair? No, no red card fault. Yeah, the, the yeah. John, John Beaton was left with with, uh, with no choice. It was a red card all day long. What about Dyson Maida? We spoke about him at the top of the show, Gary. What would you say? Absolutely excellent. You know, I mean, I think he's, he's really came on to a game as, as well this year in terms of what we've seen from him so far. I thought he was excellent. Everything's kind of going down his wing. In Saturday, which was the reasoning behind Brendan Rodgers, obviously sacrificing James Forrest. I felt for Forrest, obviously, having to go off so early. But, you know, I think it was his first start uh, since January, I think. So, you know, really, really disappointed for James Forrest. But it was the right decision because you could see everything that was danger uh, for Celtic was coming down Dyson Maida's wing. And I thought if anybody deserved a goal on Saturday, I was so glad that he got it right at the death. I, I, Mida was, was brilliant, you know, both fullbacks, Matt O'Reilly, I thought Callum McGregor as well, imposed himself um, on the game. So, so there's a number of really good performers uh, for Celtic, um, Gary. You know, I think the, the Sky Sports were, you know, three or four contenders. But for me, the, the, the story of the day was the, the manager, Brendan Rodgers. I, I think Brendan Rodgers needed that kind of game um, yeah. to. I don't know, just, I said on Friday night, Friday night, I think Celtic have been kind of flat this season. I thought the spark was there on Saturday. So they're going to a difficult venue on the back of a, of a midweek um, defeat in the opening night of the Champions League, down to 10 men after half an hour, and they, 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 they cruised it. And they, I think the manager needed something like that, and you could see him on the pitch um, at the end enjoying it. Again, just if anybody was in any doubt, he's a master coach. He's a superb coach. He's the right guy to be in charge of Celtic. Absolutely cruised it down to 10 men. His tactics, the way the players responded to him, the substitution that he had to make. Um, so I think that you can, I, I thought I saw a wee glint in Brendan Rodgers' eye uh, for the for the first time probably. Um, and I, I just think that he needed it. And that's a, I think that could be a domestically. Uh, I don't think Celtic will look back from, from Saturday. I don't think they'll look back. I pretty much agree with everything you said, Mark, but I still think there's a big disconnect between some of the supporters and Brendan. They are just not having them. And, you know, every supporter and every individual absolutely entitled to, you know, to cheer, to boo or to disregard someone, whatever your, your choice is. I think he was a, the, the right appointment. I agree with Mark. I think he's, he's out the top drawer. But you still get the feeling that there are some Celtic supporters who are just not having him because of the way he left first time round. He handled it well, though, didn't he, with the young boy who came onto the pitch. This is what he said about it afterwards. That lesson is a great day for Celtic. You know, the you come here as, as a player and to have that much support and it was absolutely amazing. And that, especially when you have a midweek game, to get that energy. And um, now that we get there, it's just common sense. It's it's a young kid that he's on to see his heroes. He wants to see his players, so he shouldn't be punished or prosecuted for that, especially when uh, the security guy is. <laughs> He's a lot older than him, so uh, I, it's, he just wants to see his heroes, and so 
just common sense and, and let him back with his mates. And Andy you got the biggest round of applause from the travelling Celtics yeah. support. You know yeah, when you saw that. It's yeah. a nice moment. The wee guy was just full of exuberance, yeah. I think, and you, you always want a uh, a wee yeah. touch, a wee squeeze of your your heroes. But um, yeah, I think Brendan Rodgers just handled it well. Mark, a, a dream for the PR people. Gary, thanks for that call. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Lots of calls coming in. Um, Derek is on. Big Rangers fan is with us. Good evening, Derek. Hey, good evening, Paul. Good evening, Paul. Hi, hey, Derek. How long do you think, how long do you think, like, um, Mark will be to sit and watch this to us before Michael Beale is removed as a manager? This cannot continue. The draw as we're watching is absolutely di- diabolical. The style of football against one of all yesterday is probably the worst I've seen in about 20 years at Rangers. That's not acceptable. And I'm sorry, but Michael Beale needs to be removed. Pupils now start to go up on their feet. Didn't have a full house in the European game. Not a full house yesterday. Pupils not watching this. I think that's... The football we're yeah. watching uh, is, is dreadful, and, uh, and he's not... a Baron Jack Butland, Rangers would have won a game this season if it wasn't for that goalkeeper. Maybe St. John said yes, but the rest of the game Rangers were lost. Andy? Yeah, I think Derry makes a good point about the... You know, the stadium's not full. The stadium's not behind the manager. They won yesterday and they get booed off the pitch. They get booed off the pitch against Celtic. I mean, I'm mentioning a disconnect between some of the Celtic supporters and Brendan Rodgers, but it is much bigger uh, between a lot, uh, a significant number of the Rangers fans and Michael Beale. And I think you can see it, you can feel it. And I I don't think it's going to work for him. You, You only have to have one more stumble and th- th- that level of disconnect, that level of abuse, will, that level of uh, booing, it will increase. And if you're on that Rangers board and you see your stadium not full, people deserting the, the ground well before the 90 minutes are, have come and gone, that's a big worry. That, that can't continue. The, the football has to improve. But I think it, it, another stumble by Rangers and uh, I think it'll prove too costly for Michael Beale. Mark, coming to you, I want to hear Michael Beale first of all. Though. This is what he said. He wasn't happy with the performance. Not the last 10 minutes, from the first minute onwards, I was unhappy with the team today. The unforced errors with the ball are unacceptable for, for players playing here. That, that performance today was, was a really poor one. I felt... It's a good goal. The goal wasn't something that we worked on in trying to overload in the middle with a width and I thought the goal was well worked. But outside of that, some of our play was so poor against a team that are obviously in a good place and well organised and came here today of a plan and, and they executed their plan better than us because we constantly turned the ball over and left ourselves vulnerable. Losing Rabi to, to injury and it doesn't look like a good one. It didn't help us, that's for sure, because we were few and far in our team of players like that today who could outplay and dribble with the ball. But actually the back three gave us some stability and some possession and it gave us some balance behind the ball. And I thought those three played well and John Lundstrom in front and Jack. But in terms of a performance, that's well below the, what the players expect, I expect, the fans expect. We got away with one today. And... Uh, I don't want to take any of it away from Motherwell. I thought they were they came here and played well. I'm sure Stuart will take a lot from the game, but for me, that that's well below what I'm looking for from this team. Yeah, an honest assessment from Michael Beale. You know, backing up with the fans. I, mean, I said at the top of the show, Paul, I felt for the Rangers players being booed off after a victory. That said, I, I get where where Derek's coming from. I mean, it's a hell of a statement from Derek, a Rangers fan. That's the worst football I've seen in probably 20 years. I mean, that's a that's a hell of a statement. Um, but I agree with Andy. I don't think Michael Beale's got another slip up in him. You know, I think if we if we look at history, um, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst never recovered from the back to back defeats at Parkhead and the, the opening Champions League. I think when we reflect, whether well, it's a couple of weeks from now or six months from now, we'll probably see that Michael Beale never really recovered from losing five one in Eindhoven, and then the, the absolute last straw was a one 0 defeat um, to Celtic Ibrox where. The fact the punters went berserk, absolutely. But I mean, I wasn't aware of how bad it was, mm-hmm. Paul, until it started to come out what was going on um, behind the scenes. So for, for Michael Beale, I think he's in a position where I can't see him turn it round. I don't expect it to be sacked anytime soon, but I'd be very surprised if he's the manager of Rangers come the end of the season. And of course, he's won three games in a week. And, yeah, and I'm not taking away from no, what you're that's saying. That's what I feel, I feel well. for him. Yeah, yeah, that's where I do feel yeah. for him because yeah. all you can do as a manager is win. But now the Rangers fans 
are demanding not only victories but a certain style. So uh, there's a long way back to if, if you know if if Derek um, you know is is symptomatic of what other Rangers fans are feeling, then it's a long road back for the manager. You you, you wonder what the chat is in the boardroom. It must be crossing their mind. What do we do if we lose to I don't know Livingston or I think they've got Aberdeen Hibs Hearts in the next number of weeks. If you get through all them, absolutely, you're yeah. plain sailing. You're you're maybe beginning to to turn that around, but and uh, good in Europe as well. You know, yeah, great start the, the, against the 1-0 against yeah. Betis was yeah. was uh, was impressive. Um, the second half performance, I think they were they were very good. But I, I just when you speak to and when you see the Rangers support and the absolute level of disgust that they have for their team, it's. Um, I just don't see it working out for Michael Beale in the long term. And you wonder what the chat is in the boardroom because, uh, to be fair, he has been given some money mm -hmm. to go and invest in players. This is his team. Some, yeah. some of them don't play. Uh, some of them don't look as though they're, uh, they're up to it. And, I mean, I couldn't tell you who Rangers' m most uh, important player is just now. Yeah. Who's who's a who's a Rangers fan's favourite player? I mean, let's ask Derek. If you take Tavernier out of the equation, who else is stepping yeah. up to the mark? Who who is consistently good? I don't know who it is. Derek. Uh, none of them. Um, Derek, what do you think? He's saying Baron Butland haven't been good enough, Paul. That's the problem. Yeah. He, he, he told us we would see a different style of football. It would be uh, excitement, fast football. The football we're watching is absolutely dreadful. And and uh, uh, you couldn't put a tenner on Rangers to beat any team just now. That was what I heard about a, from uh, Rangers. 20, 20 minutes. Sorry, Derek. 20 that minutes was like a, sorry, Derek. That was what I was hearing from Rangers fans when they were speaking about the last number of weeks of Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. Reign. The football was terrible. We're not enjoying it. And remember what uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst mm. brought to Rangers: Champions League qualification, all that money, the Scottish Cup. Uh, European final absolutely sure. brutal to get rid of him but that is what management is it's absolutely brutal and when you hear Derek uh, speak about his team I don't think he's alone I think you could get a, a lot of people coming on and saying the same things and you, you just wonder where Rangers will turn to next given that they have invested in this new manager. Has he been unlucky with injuries, for example, Danilo? I know there weren't many injuries at the beginning, Mark, but he hasn't... Th no, there's not a settled I, I, team. I, I, Nobody I, I, knows no, I mean, what's I, his I, best team. Um, yeah, and that, that, that's on the manager's part. I don't think, you know, one or two injuries. Every manager, you know, every manager up and down the country will, will have injuries and he's got a big, big um, squad. I mean, I mean, you look yesterday, I mean, probably... Andy saying who, who's the kind of main man and, and, and Derek's not, you know, giving him Probably for me, the past few weeks, it's been, it's been Matondo. And, and Matondo was yeah. bought by Giovanni Van Bronckers, you know, and credit to him for fighting his way back sure. into his plans. Yeah. But take the goalkeeper out. But one thing I would say as well about, you see, had it not been for Jack Butland, don't forget, Derek, under whether it was Stephen Gerrard or uh, Giovanni Van Bronckers, Alan McGregor was making save after save after save almost every week as well, as all goalkeepers yeah. have to do. So mm -hmm. it's not as if, you know, I mean, I, I mean, you think back to McGregor, um, Gerard's first games in, in Europe, some of the games. McGregor was covering up a lot of sins with the saves that was pulling off, you know, pulling the guys out, um, in front of him. So, um, you know, it's not a new thing. The Rangers goalkeeper have been called into action the past few years. That's for sure. Could this change though if uh, they continue to do well in Europe uh, and they win the League Cup, which is a real possibility? It's there for Rangers to yeah. go and win it, Paul. I mean, they're, they're the clear favourites, um, and rightly so, with Celtic out the picture. Uh, and I've got great suspect to Livingston. There's a home time Wednesday night at Ibrox. I mean, Rangers should be in the semi final. Now, if it did go wrong at Ibrox on Wednesday night, Michael Beale would not survive that. That would be the end. Curtains. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wouldn't survive it. You, you, you can win that game, you can win the semi final. He might not make it to the final. I just don't think he's got another. If, if we're assuming that uh, the, the gap remains the same and Celtic continue to win their games if Rangers stumble at any point I just don't think the, the board will have that the Rangers support are already not having it because they've seen their team at home and the abuse they got at the end of the game was was frightening and that's why I think it, it won't work the, in the end the supporters are 
they're a big voice and uh, some of them are not turning up to, to watch the team that, that can go on Here's a bit more from the manager after the one goal victory well, If you have a look at the list of the players that are unavailable you would say the sooner they got back the better to support the ones that are there so I think we have a squad that's capable of more than what we showed today And the latest on the injuries to Matondo and Lawrence Some thought he had cramp wanted to continue uh, in the game but we didn't take a risk the next day he woke up and couldn't walk and he's gone for a scan so Tom won't play this side the international duty has a problem with his calf obviously with the international break it sounds like it's longer because obviously that's a two week breakout so he'll return with Todd, Nico, Danilo Kieran might be back in the middle of the week to play at the weekend but obviously he's lacking in a bit of fitness and then uh, Rabi today we think that might be a bad one. He's took a blow on the outside of his knee. Um, I need to see it back, but just before coming in, that's the information I was given. Derek, thanks for that call. 0808 17 17 700. If you've just tuned in, Rangers won at the weekend, but the fans are not happy with the style or the lack of it. Dezo's getting his first SPFL goal. Celtic 3 0 at Livy, 10 man Celtic. And Hearts, what's going on there? If this was Radio Edinburgh, Mark, we'd be talking about what's going to happen. Stephen yeah. Naismith, I mean, he was manager, then he was whatever it was. Take to turn that around. Yeah, they have to turn around quickly. Yeah. Huge week coming up for them. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Personal face to face advice on renewable energy products. Let's go. Thanks, Chris. This is Paul Cooney on Holiday Monday, of course, the September weekend here in the great city of Glasgow in the West. Hope you've enjoyed it. Mark, uh, were you spotted at Hamilton Races yesterday? I heard you were. I know it's on this afternoon as well. In fact, the last race, I think it's just happening around now. How did you go on at Hamilton? Yeah, I did it. A nice uh, day out, um, uh, Paul. Hamilton yeah. Races. Um, Yesterday, a uh, old colleague, uh, Fraser Mackey, was oh. having his, his, uh, his, uh, his stag day. Uh, oh, great there, so, that, that, yeah. so, yeah, well so yeah. a few of the old uh, journal Still boys were, were out. <laughs> so, yeah, we had a good oh, wee brilliant. day and a, and a couple of others. The first time I've been at Hamilton oh. in oh, eight, nine years or so. But yeah, fantastic wee day out. Great. Magnificent. Yeah. yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, I've been there before. Uh, yeah. it's, it's tremendous. And you were at Blackpool for the weekend. <laughs> I was at Blackpool yeah. taking in the game. Yeah. Bumped into uh, my old teammate Brian O'Neill. He was oh, with Barry Nicholson. Who was part yeah. of Scott Brown's uh, coaching uh, team at Fleetwood, but no longer there. And uh, it was interesting to know a young favourite of the Celtic fans, Karamoko Dembele. Do you course. remember him? Yeah, do indeed. They had yeah. such high hopes for him. He came on as a sub for oh. uh, Blackpool. Still looks as though he's got the uh, the skill, the ability. He set up a really good chance. But um, Jordan Rhodes, it was who played yeah. for Scotland a few yeah. times. It was him that got a hat trick, and Blackpool won comfortably four one. Great things were expected of him, Mark, weren't they? Dembele, yeah. yeah, yeah he's I still got time, yeah. Mark. He's yeah, only he's 20. 20, you so, said, Andy. Aye, yeah. load, loads of time. Loads of time. I'll tell you what about all the youngsters that have been playing this year because, we've got, obviously, uh, Lennon Miller is playing. Yeah. Rangers fielded the youngster at the weekend. Hibbs, the youngest Felix. ever player, came on, nearly got a yeah. goal. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, well, I've seen that. More more. St. Johnson uh, uh, shoved on a, a 16-year-old who was even younger than the lad who's only 16 years and, and one month. Do you know that? that I, I think yeah. if you put, if he's, obviously if he's got the ability, Rangers are always talking about uh, Bailey Rice. And um, if you put him on the pitch, the supporters would definitely get behind right. one of their own. Now, obviously he needs to earn that. I, I yeah. don't know how well he is showing up in training and, and other games, but everyone speaks about him in a, in a very positive fashion. And I wonder if that is a way to... Because if you're making your, your way into the team as uh, coming from the reserves, coming from the academy, whatever you want to call it, the supporters absolutely get behind you and they will allow you know, one or two little uh, mistakes. I think the players that have been signed for a bit of money, uh, the Rangers support just seem to be waiting to, come on, who, who's going to impress me? Who's the, who's the guy I can't wait to see next week? And I don't think you're getting that. No. People love to see homegrown talent, yeah. isn't it? It's brilliant. Yeah, and, and, and Bailey Rice came on. Michael yeah. Beale you know, volunteered his name yeah. um, uh, midweek uh, after the. When he, I Real thought he was Betis going to start when he to, mentioned yeah, it. Just, it came out of the blue. Um, and, he, and, he, and he was given his turn um, yesterday. And, and you're right, Paul. So many good yeah. um, kids, you know, up and down the country getting on. We've got a couple of them. I see. And he's still a boy as well. Aaron Hickey been linked to a 60 million move um, at some point. So then that doesn't surprise me at all. You know, brilliant at right back, brilliant at left back. 
you know, within the Scotland camp, they think he could want to become Scotland's most capped ever player. Wow. Um, there's, yeah. they, they, he's that good. That's what they think of him. Um, and, they, and he shows it every week for Brentford in the Premiership. Brilliant. Rory Whitaker, he was the young lad that played Whittaker, yeah. ball boy just a couple of years ago and now playing for, for Hibs. Great, it's great to see. And Hibs, of course, will be in action this week because it's going to be the League Cup, the Viaplay Cup. Holders Celtic are out already, so there's a chance for everybody. Kelly against Hearts tomorrow. We'll talk about that in a moment or two. And then Ross County, Aberdeen on Wednesday, having played at the weekend. Hibs, St Mirren, it's going to be some game. And Rangers, Livingston, uh, they're all Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. At the weekend, well, you know the story now. St Mirren, second top of the table, Mark. It was uh, Ryan Strain who scored in seven minutes. Looked as though they were two up, but yeah. one goal. Stephen Robinson, what a job. He's been, he's been great, you know, he, he really has. Um, he's got a hold of St Mirren, he's wheeled and dealed really well in the transfer market. He's consistent with the kind of players that he signs and one thing you know about, about Stephen Robinson um, as his players do, and I know it's an old cliche, but they do give 100%. If, if you're going to beat a Stephen Robinson team, you need to work really hard to beat them. But now what they're managing to do is actually be on the front foot, regardless of where they are and who they're against, to take the game to the opposition. And they're keeping clean sheets, um, Paul, too. So, you know, they're doing really, really well. I, I'm going to that game Wednesday, Hibson right. Mirren. But the last time I saw them, I thought they were really unlucky to just get a point at home to Aberdeen. 2-2 two -two it was. But Aberdeen were very lucky. St Mirren were the, the better side that day. Will you call in beforehand? Come on the show? Come on, give us a call Absolutely. on the way, Andy. That yep. would be brilliant. I'm just seeing on Sky there it was the North London Derby. Oh. Normally we wouldn't say too much about it, but Arsenal. Some of the commentators were saying, "Yeah, bring it on, Ange. It will be no problem for the Gunners or the Gunners." My goodness, two-two at the yeah. end. Of, we just saw there Romero the penalty. When's a handball not a handball? Ah, oh, dear. Yeah, yeah. When's it not a penalty? I thought it was yeah. yesterday in the right. North London Derby. The Luton Wolves one was just just bizarre. Crazy. And yeah. uh, ours not being great. What about for Angelo to get uh, a two-two in that game it, and, and James? Do you Madison, know what it is? Yeah. Is the le you listen to any Spurs fan? I mean, you're, we're hearing Rangers fans tonight. They're so unhappy just with what they're seeing. I think if you've got a season ticket at Tottenham, you're getting value for money, and you haven't had that in recent years. They've not enjoyed the style of football under Mourinho, under Conte. My goodness, they're enjoying it under Ange Postecoglou. They can't wait for the next game. And I thought Arsenal should have been down to 10 men. I thought Nikita's mm -hmm. challenging the goalkeeper. Again. All day long, a red card. So, so lucky to get That was a leg breaker. That was a proper leg breaker, that challenge. Let's come back to Scotland then. We're going to take more of your calls. 0808 17 17 700. Uh, let's go back then to Saturday. Uh, lunchtime, it was the early kick-off and the sunshine at Livingston. Celtic winning by three goals to nil afterwards. The manager spoke about the performance. On the back end of playing with nine men during the week in a, in a tough Champions League game, to come to here and, and play that well. I thought we started the game with real good energy, the attitude in the game was really good and, and got up in the game uh, and had good control. Obviously, we, we, we lose Joe, which is I think is his first ever sending up in, in his career. So um, but we always have a plan for that if you, if you go down to... To, uh, to tell men how we, how we want to work and I thought the boys were then brilliant in terms of how they uh, took the pressure away how they tactically moved and, and, and blocked spaces and then obviously we're always a threat when we go forward and, uh, and I think when you have Dyson Mieta in your team you don't really have 10 men <laughs> so he puts in the work rate of two, two players unbelievable mentality and, uh, and he gets his reward at the end but I think overall it was a real collective effort and the boys showed uh, Outstanding resilience. Andy, what are you thinking about a bonding going on there between, you know, Maida, who was signed by the previous manager, and the current manager? Yeah, it's just when you look at Celtic, getting the job done, getting another victory, an important one. That's them now being to Ibrox, they've been to Petordre, they've been to Livy, which is always a, you know, you always talk about the pitch and the lack of uh, quality of game that you tend to get. And Celtic have come through these unscathed, but you know when they get their bigger players back fit, especially in the centre back position, Carter Vickers, uh, Navrovsky, mm -hmm. um, I think there's going to be some changes in the team. And you know, just uh, you look at Matt O'Reilly, who's getting all the attention because he started the season so well, and Hatati coming back into the team, he won a penalty. That was him making a move into the going beyond the striker, getting into the box. It was a clear penalty, I felt. So um, Celtic slowly but surely, their level of performance, I think, is getting better. Uh, the manager was saying, Mark, it's not peak Celtic yet. Peak Celtic for me is, is still a, a way off, but that's my demand and what I expect. And, and I think that'll come as players return and, 
in the work you see today. I thought, as I said, we started the game with real good energy and the quality of the football was very good on a difficult surface. So, uh, but that will come. I've, I've got no, uh, no question of that. But, um, but today's a really good performance against a team that have um, proved difficult in this early part of the season. So, uh, so really pleased with that. Used to be a real bogey ground for them two years yeah. ago, wasn't it? Three years ago. Yeah, well, yeah. I think Brendan Rodgers struggled on it. Ange Postecoglou um, struggled on it. Um, so no, that, that's what I'm saying. It was a really good uh, result. It was a big one, and, and especially when you're down to ten men um, for more than an hour. Uh, I think it was a big one um, for Celtic. And as much as, of course, Celtic would rather be in the quarter final of the League Cup this midweek, but getting a, another week on the training pitch um, for Brendan and his staff to go through different things. Uh, is it first part on Saturday? Yeah. Big, big game. I mean, what a game that's going to be, and what a test uh, for Celtic, and, and a real opportunity for for Motherwell, who played very well yesterday. So, yeah, that's another tough one. When Andy's ringed off four or five difficult away grounds, and uh, here's another one coming up on Saturday. Why James has been on asking why are Celtic away so much in this month? Is it four out of five away from home in the domestic games? I think it's Andy's at the way it comes out the computer. Computer says go away. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an so official statement? Yeah. yeah, I think that's how it works. Um, it evens itself out, that's the other phrase. Well, we the thing say. is, the, yeah. the, you'll get a, a stage in the season where Celtic have got a good run of home games, so they're certainly taking advantage of the the difficult away fixtures that they've had. It can, can't be much more difficult than Ibrox and Petodre especially, um, and obviously the, the, the plastic pitch, but they've come through it unscathed. How did they adapt after the red card? Here's Brendan Rogers. Yeah, just stay calm, I think it's... Sometimes you can worry, you get out to 10, 10 men, and, uh, but you're still well in the game. And obviously we were in control of the game at 1-0, so I just thought we had to be better with the possession. And I think we can still be better in the second half. Lost too many balls when we can keep it better. Um, but, uh, but it's just about staying calm and understanding how you're going to defend and against, the, against the 11 men. Uh, how different is it now? under Brendan Rodgers, Andy, when you watch that game. Uh, there are shades of the, the way that Ange played, but it is different. As a former player, what do you see? Yeah, well, I like the way that they, they set up, and I've seen this with a number of coaches when they lose. Um, I mean, you have to feel for James Forrest. The keeper gets sent off, and he has to be substituted. How would he feel? Oh, he's Got gutted, because yeah. he's. I think his game time's going to be limited, mm. but he got a start at the weekend, and he, he just didn't get a chance to do anything. But... You don't really play with a, a main striker going through the middle. You just played with uh, two players that were wide and their work great. We talk about Maida, but Kyogo is is the same. His work, he's another one who is very much uh, a team player. And I just like the way that uh, Brendan Rodgers, he's never phased down to 10 men, let's adjust. You saw him uh, shouting over to Callum McGregor, just one or two pieces of information. And Celtic's um, you know, possession was still very good. One or two little scares with, mm. you know, when Scott Bain was uh, taking a bit, a bit of time to, to clear the ball and Joe Hart had been a good save, I thought, early on from Bruce Anderson. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a great three points, especially under the, the trying circumstances. I, 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 I don't know about you, Andy, it's your position, but uh, I like Bruce Anderson. He's yeah, always yeah. a handful, you know. He, I've always a couple liked of loan him, yeah. moves as a kid at um, Aberdeen. Okay. I think there's maybe one yeah. or two question marks about his attitude and stuff like that. But, the work rate that he puts in and some of the quality yeah. of the goals I don't think you never really see him getting much yeah. much praise sure. but he's a real yeah. I think he's a and real it's, positive for it's Lurie. not easy for him Mark he's had a bit of a health issue in the past he's come through that and uh, as you say I think he gives you everything he's always busy and I think he's the type of guy that will get you goals it's easy to forget they had a go at the beginning didn't they just as you mentioned yeah. right at the start Livy yeah. had a go and I'm thinking there about Rangers and we were talking during the break what is going to happen at Rangers but if there's a twist, a turn, like Celtic going out of the League Cup, I don't think anyone thought that would happen. Rangers might have to depend on luck like that, that Celtic slip up. But there's no sign of that, Andy, at the moment, is there, in the no. league? No, I don't think there's any sign of that. I think Celtic's focus is obviously trying to be very consistent in the league. I think the big question is how much will they improve on the European stage? That has been the marker that Brendan Rodgers himself ha has put down. Uh, for himself, for the team, can can you be better in Europe? And it'll be a tremendous atmosphere when uh, Lazio come to town mm -hmm. and Celtic need to really get a win just to get back into the group and give the supporters a bit of hope that they can finish either second or third. It's also as well, Paul, the the title, the SPFL Premiership this season, is that 
is the richest in our game's history because of the new look Champions League it's more profitable there's more money and, and the winners will go right into the Champions League again so this is the this is the biggest prize in terms of finances for, for winning the league so it's no wonder it's the it's the focus week to week. How much more, Mark? I know you keep an eye on the bank balance, so that's what I hear at home. So, <laughs> but how much is it? Another five million or something? Because it's thirty million. We saw it in the results last week. It's huge. Yeah, getting it's... into the Champions League. I, 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 Paul, I'll find out. I don't know no, exactly sure. in terms of amount, but, but it's, and then obviously it's substantial. The, the Betty do, but yeah, yeah, it's 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 substantial. It's it's absolutely. Uh, proper money it's millions and millions more of what it, the, the current pot is and I was thinking that Andy that uh, you know the build up James Forrest I was looking there 470 games we saw in Sky 101 goals 32 which is not old mm. and then he gets what 28 minutes he must have been raging yeah. what with but, the ref or Big Joe well, yeah. why wouldn't you bring someone yeah. like that in at a difficult venue who's mm. got that experience but then you look at the, the, the manager compare Brendan Rodgers with Michael Beale the experience that Brendan Rodgers has had yeah. Uh, you know, at Chelsea, at Reading, at Swansea, at Liverpool, at Celtic the first time around. He knows what it's all about. He's come up against every, you know, every eventuality that might happen on the field of play. He, he knows how to adjust. Sometimes you need to uh, to adjust. And he's got all that know-how. He's got all that experience. You look across the city and Michael Beale just doesn't have it. This is his... What is it? His second, third um, season as a manager. It's yeah, fifty si games, roughly. Sixty. Sixty. 60 games. Sorry, yeah. sixty it's, games as right. a first team manager. Yeah. So you're you're learning on the hoof, basically. Yeah. And I think some Rangers supporters bring that up as well about his his lack of experience. He was a he always had this tremendous reputation as a coach under Stephen Gerrard. Stephen Gerrard leaning heavily on him, you know, on a day to day basis, maybe even on a a match day in terms of tinkering with. Uh, one or two little things, but it's a totally different ball game when you are uh, the front man and you're the leader and you're the manager and this is your team. Mm -hmm. There's no Ross Wilson to sort of deflect any blame mm -hmm. on um, on players that are coming in. These are all Michael Beale's players and no one's really seen a, a big spark yet. You could feel for him though, couldn't you, on a human level? Because oh, the, the pressure, you know, the big money or whatever comes with football management at football that level. Football can but, be brutal. Yeah. And mm. when you're getting booed uh, in this, you know, confined environment. Yeah. Uh, and and you, you've won the game. And you've won the game, <laughs> yeah. Well, it just tells you how high the standards are. We don't just want three points. We want three points and we want to be en entertained. And um, yeah, that's why they're on the big bucks. Celtic B coach Darren Day has pulled out of the running to be the next boss of Inverness, Cali Thistle. Um, what do you think on that, Mark? Does he want to stay around Celtic? You know, European. I know it's the B team, but yeah. a lot of players coming through. Yeah, he's he's, he's probably had discussion. He'll have you know done his due diligence mm -hmm. on you know Inverness and, and and the club and behind the scenes and what he'd have to work with and what he might be able to do or not do in the January window, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he's probably thought, I'm, I'm just going to pull. Uh, myself away in Inverness for a couple of minutes away from getting a point under John Robertson yeah. um, I don't know if that affects it because I did think John Robertson was in the driving seat to get the job I think he'd quite fancy shouldn't be another, one game another character be. no um, but on the other hand what a big win for, for Jim Goodwin for Dundee United you know massive to go up uh, to the Highlands and get those three points I mean you were talking about the brutality of management I thought it was brutal for Billy Dodds I mean what he did last season getting into the playoffs um, getting to the cup yeah. final, exceeding all expectations when you consider um, the budgets elsewhere. And he's had a, absolutely, he's had a poor start to the season, but it seems to be in management, you're not allowed to have a tough time. If it goes, especially with Inverness, if it goes beyond a month, you're, yeah. you're out the door, it's brutal. I saw that in the release afterwards when Scott Gardner, the chief executive, yeah. was saying, you know, they need to be in the Premiership. The economics dictate that they come back. We're going to have a quick break and then we're back. VAR, our own GAR, is next. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Personal face-to-face -face advice on renewable energy products. Let's go! Thanks to you for making the switch. We really appreciate every one of you who call in, tune in every night or listen later on in the podcast. You can get it wherever you get your podcast. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Some terrible scenes at the weekend, Andy. Ajax against Feyenoord. Feyenoord yeah. were three up at the opposition ground. As we know, I think just looking at it just now, the game had to be abandoned. Yeah, it's obviously not what you want to see, but they're going to come back and play it and it's still 3-0, thankfully, to 
they're, they're, they're not going to Final. start it at 0-0. Yeah. Mm. But terrible damage and vandalism mm. around the stadium. In, in their own pitch, you know, their own grounds. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I, I actually in free fall, um, Paul, you know, for, for the past sort of six months or so, um, you know, you look at Ed, Edwin van der Sar, uh, resigned and, you know, unfortunately took a stroke, you know, so hopefully he's, yeah. he's, he's on the road to recovery. Um, but the new director of football that, that they brought in, but used to be at Arsenal, chaotic, absolutely chaotic, um, behind the scenes. And, um, a lot of people thought maybe that the head coach would, would, would suffer, but mm-hmm. no, it's the director of football's gone. And I think, um, certainly Ajax will be, will be the better for that, um, because they were talking about the people connected to the club were saying that, um, if things kept going the way they were going then Ajax wouldn't even be top six this season. They'd be really, really struggling. And the game is going to be continued, isn't it? So from yeah. the moment it stopped, 3-0 to final. final. That was yeah. the first half, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, 35, 37 minutes, something like that. Like that. Yeah, so they're going to take it yeah. from there at 3-0. Andy, what's that like to play? And it must be really difficult. You know, if you're three up and you've yeah. got a crowd there, albeit that the crowd get out of hand. But Yeah, I've never had a, you know an abandoned uh, game. Yeah. I've never been part of that. I've played in some games where... The wind actually would you would think it might be abandoned it was so strong but no I've never had that experience it's a strange one right stand by it's our own Gar next G-A-R the Go Assisted Referee on the Go Radio Football Show with CSD Air Conditioning experts in commercial and residential air conditioning maintenance could be a football manager just watching Poch going up there I mean all those riches you know, and then Rangers winning yesterday, but booze as they go off the pitch. Who would be Michael Beale? Who would be Pochettino? Would you take the ten million a year that Poch is being paid, Andy? Could you take the draw? He's, uh, he's yeah. definitely on the, the big yep. bucks, but my goodness, the amount of money that Chelsea spend and they they just can't get it right. Yep. So more on Rangers. We'll hear more from Michael Beale in a moment because a huge w- week for them. When is it not a huge week yeah, for exactly. well, any yeah. of the teams? But Rangers, Celtic, everyone. Um, let's look at any uh, decisions at the weekend that were maybe questionable. Were they? Well, that was the big news in the first half. Celtic were what one up at that point, and uh, Joe Hart was sent off at Livingston. Red card. He came out his box, clattered the player, and uh, went up the tunnel. But before that it went to VAR or did it even go to VAR I'm not sure that it did here's Brendan Rodgers afterwards about the red card what did you yeah, feel it, yeah it's one of the awkward ones it, it, it pops up on the pitch so it's difficult for, for Joe he's obviously sometimes that'll bounce and then skid through to him so um, the referees made the decision on it from that it was about the reaction you know, Scott Bain comes in and does great keeps the clean sheet and uh, and the team like I said tactically were excellent Andy any complaints well, I think every red card is looked at by VAR just to yeah. just to be sure. But uh, no complaints. I thought it was the right decision. As soon as the incident happened, you you immediately crossed my mind. That's a red. Mark, what did you feel? What's your heart? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read all day long. Yeah, Paul. No, no complaints um, at all. I'm not one of the guys that's going to jump the bandwagon and say that Joe Hart's you know times up. You know, I think he's a really good goalkeeper. If there's better out there, great, and that's the job of the Celtic recruitment department to go and find better um, than Joe Hart. But you know, finding better than him um, won't come easily. That's for sure. Sangari, it was, wasn't it, who charged through? But mm. that's the rules, and you're off. And he did well because yep. he got the first touch. That was a crucial yep. thing, knowing that he was going to get clattered. And uh, yeah, it was the right call. Josh Mullen, a red card at Dundee, two-two with Kilmarnock. Don't know if you saw that one. I did see that, and yeah. I thought it was harsh. I didn't. Th- yeah. If he'd if he'd shown a yellow, mm-hmm. I, I don't think anyone would have complained. I don't think it would have been upgraded. Um, but it's a poor refereeing decision, in my view. I think I would agree for what it's worth. I thought, well, I mean, it wasn't a great. Yeah. It was a bad tackle. And I think you should you always, as yeah, a referee, a yellow. I mean, you obviously you want to apply the laws of the game, but if there's any leeway that you can possibly show the players and forget the colour of the strip just the, the incident itself I don't think it merited uh, a red and it's always a better game 11 be 11 and I think was that not the time when, when David Monroe was asked to go and look at the screen and they stuck to his decision so yeah. you don't often um, see that I, I thought at the time it did look a red to me to be honest I thought, yeah. but then I thought that uh, Dees could have had a red card um, as well for the for the for the lunge of you're going to send off, and I think that's a manager of a problem consistency. So if the first was a red card and he stuck his guns after reviewing it, then I'm surprised that Dees wasn't a red card as well. Yeah, Bakayako had scored for Dundee and then he was sent and then Sinner, Mark, you probably saw that as well. It went to VAR. Um, 
Andy, I don't know if you saw it. It was a penalty. Danny Armstrong took it. Yeah. So I think it was probably the right decision. I think yeah. it was a pin yeah, pole. That yeah. was fine. Yeah. And then two two. So yeah, Jack Rudden scoring right at the end. It was like a victory, wasn't it for Dundee? It, it was. Yeah. 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 You know, um, I think the goalie. Everybody's. Um, up and uh, Zach Rudden's got in there and got a goal uh, for Dundee and, and enjoyed these celebrations. And I think a, probably a draw was a was a fair result and good for for for, um, for Derek McInnes and uh, and Tony Doherty. Yeah. You know, old colleagues for more than a, a decade. I think I share the spoils. Both will be happy with that. Back together again. Well, Derek's not happy though, is he? So, so that wasn't the end of the action, Andy. As you know, ninety uh, fifth minute ball comes towards yeah. it was going out of play once obviously the throw in to be taken quickly so he, he encroached whether, whether it was in or out I just don't think there's any need for a, a, a red card I mean he, he he obviously felt as though the ball went out of play he wanted to to keep the, the, the pressure on um, I think it was just a bit harsh to be to be shown a red there was no there was no malice there was no cheating involved there it was it was just a daft incident. Yeah, no malice of forethought. Do you agree, Mark? Yes, yeah, not yeah, a come on. I, mean, I think that's just something you just, as a referee, just take a deep breath, you know, and then it's not like that. It's, it's got no being in play because the ball was out, wasn't it? It was given yeah. um, as out, I'm sure. Well, yeah. Or was it not? No. no. It so, right, well, it did come on the pitch. But still, yeah. to, to get a red, a straight <laughs> red for that, mm, I'm, I'm not so, but I suppose. Yeah. Uh, by the letter of the law, yeah. David Monroe probably called it right, but sometimes a wee bit of common sense. But he's got a supervisor in the stand, hasn't he? I mean, to be fair to the referees, is that not one of the issues that they're being marked all the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah they've got to go by the the, the 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 letter of the law, but sometimes you can just you know just take a breath, you know, before you make a, a decision. Ryan Strain scored for St Mirren in seven minutes put them on the way to victory there was a long time to go then it looked as though there were two up Grieve offside though mm. was chalked off took quite some time Mark what was your view on it? Uh, it well the, the, the pictures that we saw from VAR that, that you're having to make a decision on I would still see it look more onside than offside but it was inconclusive and I, I would then say if it's inconclusive surely the goal should stand I thought the lines were unconvincing and uh, it's just a, another example. You've got six cameras at the at the game. It's a form of VAR light. You're you're doing the best you can, but you you couldn't show that to anyone and prove conclusively that they've got the right decision. I think it was a bit of guesswork. I think you're absolutely right with that um, saying VAR light. That's what we've got in Scotland, Andy. Some people don't like one. it, but they don't like you say that. Listen, it, we'll get is. we'll yeah. get. A, I'm sure there'll be one incident during the season where you get. Um, a ball was over the line or not and you know it will just go down to the naked eye because we don't have goal line technology and the reason we don't is it's um, clubs don't want it it's too expensive and remember we've got League Cup quarterfinals this coming week and there's a couple of clubs who are opting out of VAR because it's too expensive that's right wow yeah, yeah. What about Scotland was women? They were at Sunderland, the Stadium of Light the other night, and then they lost. Controversial penalty. Scotland head coach Pedro Martinez Loza, full of praise for his players. Uh, 2 1, we lost. But what about that moment, Andy? I, I couldn't Thomas. believe it. Yeah. I mean, Millie Braid is the, the clearest penalty that you could see in any game. Yeah. Barging into the back of oh. Martha Thomas. It was clear penalty for us. We didn't get it. It's like something at the wrestling, wasn't believe. it? Oh, I couldn't yeah. believe it. <laughs> it was. Yeah. It was, it was a clear pen. Yeah. Yeah, it was a clear yeah, Martha Thomas was 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 definitely foul. But up, over and above that, what a really good performance from the Scottish team. Remember, England, uh, you know, runners up in the the, the World Cup uh, a few exactly. weeks ago, yeah. reigning European champions. Um, it was a really good performance from Scotland. And should we mention the Romero? Was that should that have been a handball? Should it have been given? Um, Var said yes, and the. The North London Derby? Yeah, I what thought it was a pen was pull. It? Yeah, for yeah, me, that yeah. was a pen. You said that earlier, yeah. I think, Andy, as well. So Agreed. you two are agreeing tonight, yeah? yeah? <laughs> well, anything else major? Never lost. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> G-A-R, the go-assisted referee on the Go Radio Football Show with CSD Air Conditioning. Experts in commercial and residential air conditioning maintenance. And we'll be back next Monday night with some VAR decisions to look at with our guy. I would say, Mark, am I right? Compared to, I know we didn't have it this time last year. It came in round about this time. You know, it came in in the autumn. VAR. Yeah, yeah, VAR. Yeah. It's not so contentious this year. Would you agree? Yes, ab absolutely, Paul. Um, I would. I think it might come in after the second international break yeah. uh, last season. But yeah. I, I think, you know, just about every Monday night we're on the show, that, that was your headline. You know, a particular referee or who was in the 
who was in the van um, making the calls and, and it dominated you know the media conferences as well Saturdays and Sundays but certainly this year it's been quieter the biggest one that we've had of course has been Rangers disallowed goal um, at Ibrox when they, when they yeah. opened the scoring against so that's been one of the most um, contentious ones but I'm sure every manager up and down the country in our, in our, in our top 12 will have their own um, their own gripes with, with our this season but you're right I think it's been quite calm yeah, uh, you know, there's something quite refreshing about going to watch English football and there's no VAR, or going to watch the yeah, Scottish yeah. Championship mm-hmm. and there's no VAR. It's instant decisions. <laughs> and it almost takes you back to a, a bygone era because mm-hmm. every goal that is scored now, whether it's the top flight in Scotland or England, there's <laughs> just that wee bit of hesitancy. Is, do you think it is? Yeah. Or we need to wait and... Uh, it's it's the new normal, but uh, um, yeah, I think Mark is right. It has improved this season, but we can still be we can still be better. It can take away the real high, can't it? If you think, yeah. oh, we've scored or have we? Yeah, it's not quite the same there when you realise yeah. uh, just afterwards. Quick break, then it's the news, and then we're back. Oh eight oh eight seventeen seventeen seven hundred. Looking to reduce your energy bills? Global Eco Energy install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial and public sector customers with a wide range of renewable energy products including solar PV, battery storage and air source heat pumps we offer bespoke solutions for a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options go to global-eco.co.uk and quote Solar 10 for 10% off your installation available until 30th September 2023 the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Personal face to face advice on renewable energy products. Let's go! It's going to be some week. We're looking forward to midweek and then the weekend as well. Rangers have got Aberdeen. Huge game. Always is, isn't it, Andy? And I yeah. looks. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I saw Aberdeen close at hand yesterday. Undoubtedly their best performance of the season. First win of the season, of course. Uh, of course. And. The thing that struck me about their play um, yesterday in that demolition of Ross County was the fact that uh, Duke and Miofsky were back to their, their best form. The form that you associate with them last season when they were scoring goals regularly. The work rate, I mean, you talk about Dyson Maida for Celtic. You look at the amount of work that Duke uh, puts into his game. So him and Miofsky, who got a couple of goals... Duke uh, got the one. He, he was unlucky to, uh, not to get a couple himself. Uh, those two will play at Ibrox and they will be a handful for that Rangers defence. It's going to be some game, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, it yeah. will be. I mean, they both get big games in midweek um, as well. You know, um, But on, on Saturday, Ibrox, Rangers-Aberdeen games are, are always tasty. Um, and um, interesting to see what kind of frame of mind and what results that both of them go in the back of and it could well be if they both go through they could be drawn against each other in the semi-final um, and then they're both playing each other at Ibrox on, uh, on Saturday but there'll be 50,000 there Paul that'll be a cracking game Celtic no midweek game of course mm. because they're out of the League Cup that's the first time Brendan Rodgers has ever lost a domestic cup game in Scotland big Celtic fan is on the line Kevin good evening Kevin Good evening, thanks for reminding me about the cup game there, mate. Sorry, I'm Kevin. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Andy Hi, saying hello. So it's Mark. So, what did you Hi, think Kevin. about Saturday? Um, listen, I thought Saturday was really impressive. Mark and Andy, um, and yourself, you'll know, Celtic have struggled there. Mm-hmm. Um, Brendan Rodgers included, uh, we, we've struggled there. So he put in that performance and play the best part of an hour with, with, with 10 men. I thought it was encouraging. I think the performances are slowly but surely getting better. Um, if we include the first 44 minutes in Holland, I thought we were brilliant as well. Match the Dutch champions, blow for blow, no problem. Didn't look out of place at all. Uh, and then I got another good performance there in Livingston. We're, we're getting better, but uh, we're only going to get stronger because Rio Hattati is slowly getting fitter. Yeah. We'll have Carter Vickers back. Um, so we're only going to get stronger, but my main points were about two players mm-hmm. in particular. Um, and also I'd like to hear Andy and uh, yeah. Mark's thoughts on how we're playing. But uh, the, the main two points were about two players in particular. One is uh, Matt, Matt O'Reilly. Mm-hmm. I think he fell away a wee bit at the end of last season, like a few of the players did. Um, I know he had some personal issues. and uh, There was also transfer talk. I'm not sure if that played with his mind a wee bit, but his performances dipped quite significantly. But he is, Brendan Rodgers has transformed that boy. He's looking, he is looking out of this world um, this season, uh, back to his best. 
Uh, and the second player is Liam Scales. Okay. Um, I was saying to the guy that answered the phone, Mark will correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think that this guy could be this season's version of Ryan Christie. Mark will, Mark will keep me right here, but I am sure Ryan Christie, he was up at Aberdeen on loan, and when he came back, we were struggling for bodies, and Brendan Rodgers pitched him in in a cup game, and he basically never came back to the side. Yeah, hearts at money um, and Was it? Right, okay, mate. Yeah. So I'm, th- I'm thinking that Liam Scales could be, I'm not saying it will be, could be okay. a similar story if he keeps on being consistent because Ryan Christie had no future at Celtic and all of a sudden, Mr. Consistent and Liam Scales working with Brendan Rodgers, I think that's got to serve him, serve him well. Just want to see what he's thinking about. Mark, will we go Liam Scales first? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, he's not looked um, out of place at all. And he certainly benefited from the the spell at Petaudry and loan. There's no doubt about that. And Barry Robson was desperate to get him back, thought he was getting him back. And then obviously Celtic had the two or three injuries uh, and, and sold Starfelt. Um, so, yeah, Liam Scales and, and Brendan Rogers say that as long as you're in the team um, and you're doing well, then you'll hold the jersey. And one thing that you can tell about, about Liam Scales already, he's not phased. Uh, by any scenario look at his performance against Rangers um, at Ibrox and clearly he can follow tactical instructions which is a big part of being Bre- in Brendan Rodgers' team Do you think that still holds true if you've got the jersey and you're playing well you can keep it I'm, I'm not so sure it used to be that way but I think if we've paid a lot of money for you and you're back fit I think you'll go back into the team and I would love to see someone we spoke about it earlier about some of the young players that have made such a splash over the, the weekend it is always great to see a young player. I know Celtic got him from Shamrock Rovers, was it? Yeah. Um, and he, he had most of his experience at Aberdeen. I think he played around 30-odd games. But um, you'd love to see him mm. staying in the side. Mm. But I'm not convinced he will stay in the side when Carter Vickers and Nafarovsky are fit. Oh, my answer to that would be, Andy, if he was a right-sided central defender, no, because Carter Vickers will come right back into the team and rightly so. He's a left-sided defender and Celtic don't have somebody because Starfelt's away. That position's up for grabs and he is a natural left footer. Uh, so therefore, Carter Vickers, for me, comes right back in regardless when he's ready. But I think that position's up for grabs on the left-hand side. Nevrosky, on paper, is coming and looking the part and he's cost four million quid. But I think I think that left-sided position is up for grabs and at the moment, oh, scales will take some shifting. And Andy, what about Kevin's point then? Um about Matt O'Reilly because he did shade it last season didn't he Wasn't yeah I'm not sure yeah. Brendan Rodgers has transformed I've, I've always liked Matt O'Reilly I thought he's always been an important part of that Celtic midfield I think he's got a really good understanding there with uh, Callum McGregor and Hatati. you know maybe the the top three there when he was maybe in and out when Aaron Moy was, was playing but I think he has um, you know been very consistent since the start of the season and uh, he's always he's always liable for a, for a goal. He got one at the weekend. Should have had one probably against uh, was it St Johnston when they they got a nil nil draw at Parkhead. He'd a, he'd a few chances, but yeah, I like him. I've always uh, admired the way he plays, and uh, I think he's becoming more and more important to the way that Celtic are playing this season. A bit of sizzle there now, Kevin, which wasn't there at the start of the season. Would that be fair? It was a bit flat. Ah, you was you that would be absolutely you're absolutely spot on, mate. It was a bit flat. I think there's an element uh a surprise obviously with Angelique. Maybe an element of disappointment as well that the players maybe I think the players were like the fans a wee bit, to be honest with you. I think the players were gutted they had left. They took a wee bit of uh, getting air, but um Are you behind the, Brendan Rogers a hundred percent then, Kevin? Andy, I was on a couple of weeks ago go speaking to Big John. I'm 110 percent behind Brendan. How could you not be? This is an this is an elite level manager. I was raging when he left, Andy. All right, mm-hmm. just like everybody else was, just like John was, just like everybody was. But at the end of the day, we lost Ange, and you're thinking it's the end of the world. And when I went on to another show, and I'd said there's only one guy that we that I want back, and it's Brendan Rodgers because who else who else could we have got that? is out there that is a class act that is available that's affordable that gets the club that gets our budget the, the restraints we need to work within he was the only man for the job mate and um, I, I'm, I'm well well behind him and I think that um, the future is looking not too bad for Celtic at the minute especially with our annual accounts coming in um, I think they were I think they were 
were doing no bad. But I would really, really like to hear Andy uh, and Mark's opinion on... Like, I've not been had a chance to come on, but Mark, what did you think about how we played in Holland? Do you think there's any... What positives do you think Celtic can take for that performance? I, 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 great for 45 minutes. Yeah, I, I thought I wouldn't use the word great. I, I found it a wee bit flat. I was watching it on the telly, Kevin, and I was watching me bits. I, I was getting a wee bit bored to be perfectly honest um, with the first. I didn't think Fine were, were great shakes. Celtic one or two uh, opportunities. The thing was, you know, that they, they, they looked fine. You thought, yeah, you could actually see Celtic nicking a point. I don't. When they looked as if they were going to get three, uh, for me, then obviously, um, uh, you know, they collapsed uh, with a goal. Uh, the free kick and then you know um, losing right. men with the with the red card so it kind of became a sort of kind of predictable outcome for Celtic um, away from home in Europe over the last um, few years but I, I still think they're in it you look at Lazio Lazio have not started the season well so there's a real chance to go and do something but what, what Celtic are going to have to defy is there's, there's no evidence in recent times to suggest that they can that they can do well enough um, in this section but those kind of records are there to be broken and with 60,000 fans behind them as you say with a top class manager yes results for, for Brendan Rodgers at Celtic and Liverpool in Europe have they been great but he took Leicester to a semi-final of a European trophy a yeah. couple of seasons ago so I think he's learned I some lessons yeah I think he's learned some I lessons he can third. too right. I, th I think yeah. third's there I, I agree with you uh, Kevin um, I think third the uh, is there, but Celtic are really going to have to step it up again. You, you played yeah. a, a clip earlier, Paul, where uh, Brendan Rodgers was talking about peak Celtic. And I think that's what they'll need to be, especially at home in the Champions League. I think they've got a great chance of going through or, or finishing third. You look at the quality of Atletico Madrid. They beat Real Madrid uh, at the weekend. Mm. But I agree with Mark. I think Lazio are there for the taking, home and away. Feyenoord were there for the taking away but that's uh, that's gone now and uh, I think Celtic need to beat Lazio at home need to beat Feyenoord at home I think Celtic are well capable I said it before a ball was kicked I thought they could easily reach about five, six, seven points and uh, I still think that even now How did Celtic get Brendan Rodgers, Andy, when you think about it, you know, when you look back on it, because I think everyone, most people said, well, oh, he would be the number one choice, number one choice. You're not going to get him, but he's, they did. Yeah, he's, he was available. He maybe felt as though there was some unfinished business. And I think you've got to remember the Champions League for someone like Brendan Rodgers is a big draw. He wants to make his mark in Europe. He's done all the um, domestic success before, back-to-back -back trebles. He was on the He was on the verge of a... What was it a treble, treble before he before he left? And I understand the anger that some Celtic fans had, but I've never went along with the fact that uh, some some think he's a, a bit of a fraud. Uh, I think he's I think he's a yeah. top class manager. I think he'll bring success to Celtic. But I thought it was really interesting the fact that he laid down his own marker. We need to be competitive in Europe, and we want to be uh, beyond Christmas in Europe. And I think it, I think it's a very very realistic and a very reasonable goal to have. Kevin, it sounds as though you all think third place is more than possible for Brendan Rodgers Celtic. Think, yeah, definitely. I think it's I think it's well within our grasp. I think I'm, I, listen. I'm a realist when it comes to Celtic in Europe. Just as the Rangers fans will be, just as the Portuguese fans will be, just as the Dutch fans will be. Mm. There's only so much that the us clubs in that bracket can do when you're up against. The, the elite the, the top elite clubs there's only so much you can do so I think finishing third and having a decent run in the Europa League would be well within our grasp and if we can get to beyond Christmas Brendan Rodgers has already said that he is all, him and the board are already working on signings for January um, maybe they just ran out a wee bit of time or whatever this summer but um, I, I think third place is well within our grasp but I agree with Andy I think I actually think we'll need a minimum of seven points to get to get third. Um, I, I think that's what we're going to have. To, but put it this way, I think we're going to have to go unbeaten at home. That's what I think. I think, I think they're I capable think of that, Kevin. Now, if Celtic beat Lazio, if they beat Feyenoord, what what can they do against Atletico Madrid home or away? Could they get a point? Could they get a win at home? Um, nah, could they, they, could they get? Andy, I don't think we'll be yeah, up. I I think you might be right. Could they get anything in Lazio away? But the home form, I think, will be the, the real key as to whether Celtic will finish second or third. The last thing you want is for them to finish bottom of the group. Kevin, final point. You're looking forward to Motherwell, lunchtime at the weekend? 
I'm looking forward to it, mate. The, by, and, well, I'm looking forward to it I, and, uh, in one sense. I But I actually watched the the majority of the game against Rangers at Ibrox and I actually think Muller will put in a really, really good shift. But I think they were really unlucky to come away with nothing. Yeah, um, so it's not, yeah. be, it's not going to be yeah. easy. No, they're a really good side. Kevin, thanks so much for making the call. 0808 08, 17, 17 700. We're going to turn to uh, look at yesterday's game with Rangers because there's lots of messages coming in from Rangers fans who, yet yeah, they got the points, three wins in a week, but you wouldn't think it when you look at the message boards, Mark. I don't remember a time like this where there's so much criticism of the team and the style of the team and it's just not convincing. No, it's not. With yet, you know, back to back wins, back to back. Clean sheets, a League Cup quarter final on Wednesday night in a home game against um, Aberdeen, four points um, behind Celtic. <clears throat> Excuse me, in the title race, but off to a really good start in, in Europe. So, in, in, in some respects, I feel for Michael Beale and the players, but in other respects, I, I, I see where the fans are, are coming from. They're not having it, but mm, it's, it's not a good situation to be in because to be successful, Paul, you've got to be together, you know, in all areas of the club, boardroom to the manager's office to the dressing room to the stands. And at the moment, they don't have that. He's been backed by the board big time, hasn't he? Yeah, he yeah. has. Uh, you know, absolutely. This is his team. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's, he's, he's used Matondo, brought him back, back in for the cold. Scott Wright got his game um, yesterday, yesterday after being close to being sold um, a month ago. So you, you you see things, John Suter coming back off the bench. So, look, it, it's still there for Rangers. It's still there for them to go and turn it around. They, they could have a trophy. In, in two months' time, yeah, it's or three months' time. So, but at the moment, I, um, I'm struggling to see Mike, Michael Beale holding on to his job. Let's hear a bit more from Michael Beale. So after the win yesterday, Dezzo's getting a touch handy to get, but it counts. Yeah. You know, he got the goal. In the back of the net. Yeah, yeah. his first SPFL goal, one nil, and Mull did play really well. We will talk about them. But he was asked that question about what the handbrake off. Remember, he'd said that some a couple of months ago. So he was asked about that. Listen, we I've just sat here and said I want us to play better football. The teams that I've had play better football than today. So I'm sitting here and being honest. The Seema and Ruth come in today's game with niggles and we need them for Wednesday. So the reality is we add on the pitch what we add on it and we had to do certain things to get the result today because we weren't very good. So I'll leave it there with that. On Thursday night we go on, we're over the moon with the second half and the way we play against the better team we play today. In all respect, that's not me, my view, that, uh, that better is a better team than my view. That would be everybody's view. All right. So I under- can't understand why... At 10 o'clock Thursday, you walk off the pitch with that feeling and planning that way and then turn in what we did today. So that's my question to the group, to me as well and my staff. That performance day wasn't good enough. But I don't want to go down that road because uh, we had to do things today and, and I've got more insight than anyone in the schedule we got coming up. We have a quarterfinal on Wednesday and it would have been reckless of me to put those two out on the pitch today with that in mind. So that cleared up the you know the injury issue and gives, why gives you an insight. Yeah. yeah, it gives you an insight, Paul, so, and that's what you want. You know, when mm. you're being criticised after a victory, you've got to explain why the performance. You know, what's some of the circumstances? He explained why two players didn't start, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And clearly, he's now with the performance that some of the guys that he's signed, Paul, so far, are clearly not up to. They're clearly not up to wearing a, a Rangers jersey, and, and and that's on the manager. I think what you can guarantee, Paul, is that the Rangers fans will be sitting back on Wednesday night. Come on, entertain me. What what have you got? Who who wants to step up and put in a really good performance? Because you can hear the level of frustration in Michael Beale's voice with, with people that he has brought to the club and they're just not showing it. So, quite rightly, supporters will have their own opinion and right now it's not favourable towards the manager. Here's a bit more from the manager after the win. The goal was really good play. If you watch the goal back, the combination play between them was really good play. So in that sense, in that moment, they, they've shown they're more than capable. At the end of the game, we get a 4v2, 3v2. We get a 2v1 in the first half. We've just got to miss a player with a pass. So we're getting in the right areas and the quality's not been good enough. The boys in the dressing room next door, they know that as well. You know, They know that. They, they're frustrated with themselves and... The, uh, the only thing you have as a coach and player is the next game. The next game's a quarter-final. It's hugely important. But there's a massive warning sign around today's performance. Today's performance was nowhere near good enough. Andy, Mark, what do you say? Where are the winners? Where are the leaders in that squad? Well, they stand up quickly, Paul. Yeah. You know, and, and 
and it's there you know there's there some really good players they're not, they're not showing it off that enough yep. Andy, well, 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 he, well, well he's, <laughs> well, he's <laughs> clearing up I, I, I yeah. think it does tell you that there's there's pressure there's examination every performance every time you pull on the jersey there's a level of scrutiny that a lot of them won't be used to and uh, absolutely you can have a bad game but when you hear the amount of frustration and anger from the supporters booed off against uh, Celtic in, in no uncertain terms, booed off at the weekend, and they, as Mark was saying, and they won the game. And this is on the back of a, an impressive 1-0 victory against Batiste. The, the supporters need to be shown a lot more. A lot of the fans have made up their minds about the manager yeah. and it's going to have to take something extra special to convince them the, the, the doubters that he's the right man and there's only one way that he'll do that Paul ultimately uh, if he's still in a job you need to deliver the title mate. the Rangers fans are not going to accept Celtic doing three in a row um, in eight months time so it's it's a big ask it's a real big ask um, but he's a man um, that's in control of the, of the job and it's up to him because he knows it he knows the rules got to go and deliver Nine, ten of his own new players. If he's still there, he'll have another transfer window in January. He's going to do a bit, a bit of wheeling and dealing. But ultimately, he must deliver the title. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. 10% off your solar install in September. Terms and conditions apply. Let's go. The People's Game, 0808 17 17 700. Paul Cooney, Mark Guidi, Andy Walker. Lots of uh, good calls tonight. Some Celtic fans on saying things are getting better under Brendan Rodgers and looking forward to Navrosky coming back. Cameron Carter Vickers. Hatati getting fit again. Mark. That looks to be the direction of travel for Celtic in the league, mm. but they're out of the cup, the league cup. And Kevin said earlier, thanks for reminding of of that. For Rangers, they won again at the weekend, but the fans we can hear are just not happy. Mm. But Livingston, how big is this game this week in the cup? Oh, if Rangers need to win it. If, if Rangers are knocked out by Livingston Wednesday night, Paul, I don't think Michael Beale would survive that. And even not himself, it wouldn't be um, acceptable. You know, if, if, if the Rangers hierarchy and the Rangers supporters, you know are hell-bent on success and that is delivering the title but certainly delivering the first trophy that's available with Celtic out of the picture he wouldn't survive that so it's a massive game and then Saturday's massive so he's in that area Paul where I still and I agree with Andy right at the top um, I thought you know the back-to-back one he had to win the four home games or certainly three out of the four I think he could have got away with a draw against Betis but he's won it so fair play to him and the players but he needs to win the next two to, to, to set them up and take a wee bit of pressure off his shoulders but he's got a long road ahead of him Michael Beale and a really difficult road ahead of him It's quite a schedule at the moment he was asked about it yesterday yeah, the, the schedule I can't um, I can't plan the schedule the schedule is what it is we play nine games in the first month of the season we're playing seven now in 21 all of the injuries we've got have come through the, the game so if we lose Rabi now for a long period of time we lost Tom midweek they've all come through the game so it's unfortunate but this club's been used to playing in Europe. It's not, you know, it did take a big effort against Bears, a big emotional effort, and then we're playing again today. But this, we know what the schedule is. We only made three changes, but the players coming in, the team on papers, it, I'm demanding more from them, demanding more from all of us. I think um, if we go down that road of tiredness, it's a dangerous road because the schedule's not changing. Andy, tiredness at this stage of the season? No, the fans aren't having that. They are looking for a bit more quality and. and if you examine some of the stuff that Michael Beale said, you know, it was simple, 10-yard passes, and they were going astray. I mean, as, uh, I think in his words, uh, unforgivable, have to improve. Um, so just the very, very basics. And uh, you still need to find some of the players that Michael Beale has brought to the club. You need to find them. Who, who are the strong characters? Who will eventually come to the fore and be a very consistent player, knowing that their team is under a lot of pressure, who can step up and and show the supporters that they've got ability? One of them is Sam Lammers, and he said after the game, uh, the excuses are over for Rangers. Uh, the fans are within their right to let us, the players, know they're not happy um, with that performance. Sam Lammers is one of them that the jury's still out on, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think technically it looks good. I think yeah. one thing about Lammers is, for me, and I know it should be a given, but it's not always a given, I think he does care. I think he gets it. Right. You know, yeah. I think you know he's only been at the club six, six, seven weeks, but I think he's fully tuned in to what the the, the level of expectation. And I think he's one of the guys that can uh, deliver uh, for Rangers. I, I think he's a player 
Um, but in terms of the time, they said, Paul, last week in September, no chance. I'm, yeah. I'm not having that. Unless I'll, I'll, I'll happily cut players and managers a bit of slack. Um, but tiredness at this stage, absolutely not. You know, 18 months ago, Rangers were going to a European final playing Thursday, thun- Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, beat Celtic an extra time in a Scottish Cup semi final, etc. So, no, I'm not having the. The tiredness, if you're tired uh, by now, you shouldn't be anywhere near a full time jersey, not at Rangers and, anyway. And if they were winning games, you can't wait for the next game. Yeah. We're winning again. Who's who's next? Bring them on. But every game is there's a, an element of fear around it and around the result. What about Motherwell, though? To be fair to them, they... I'm glad you mentioned that because yeah. Motherwell have been so impressive under Stuart Kettlewell and their level of performance. I mean, I know that they lost at home to St Mirren, maybe a bit of a uh, surprise, but then you listen to Stuart Kettlewell talk about maybe the best that he's played since he, he's been there. But uh, a club with very modest resources, they've got a couple of fine young players, a bit like Stephen Robinson at St Mirren. They've they've signed well uh, for the for the modest amount of of money that they can spend, and they competed so well at Ibrox. They'll give Celtic a game at the weekend. Obviously, they 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 won't be favourites. It's a beautiful surface you've got there at Fir Park. Yeah. And um, you know you've no worries for Motherwell. You just think, can they, can they get into the top half of the table? Because St Mirren are really good this season. You expect uh, Hearts to improve. I think Hibs are already improving under the the new manager, uh, Nick Montgomery, and obviously Celtic Rangers are your top two. Aberdeen I saw at the weekend. Mm-hmm. If they perform like that for the majority of the season, they'll be back up in the top flight. So the the challenge for Motherwell is to try and, and get in amongst that elite. Are they going to be top six for you, Andy? That's I think it's going you to be started. A, yeah, I think it's going to be a tall order, but uh, really? I would love yeah. to see Motherwell get into the top six. Ollie Shaw was almost in the record books, wasn't he? You know, in the history books, getting an equaliser. Uh, Butland did well to save. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a it was a good save. Motherwell created, you know, two or three uh, good chances. Jack Butland, good saves. Don't forget Liam Kelly, a couple of good saves as well for Lammers, Motherwell to keep yeah. it. Um, at uh, at one 0 so yeah, all in all, a good performance um, from Motherwell. I like Stuart Kettlewell. You know, I look at what what he took over, and I thought Motherwell were going straight down. Paul to be honest, but he's turned it around quickly. And to begin into that game at Ibrox yesterday, unbeaten in, in eight months away from seven months away from <laughs> home, brilliant record. I remember going there uh, with Motherwell under Tommy McLean. Yeah, and we get absolutely battered by, by Rangers, but we somehow won one nil, and we got a late goal. But five minutes before the end, Tommy McLean said to me, you get over to the far side, I'm going to take you off and see if I see you jogging, I'm going to fine you a week's wages. <laughs> so I go over to the far side and sure enough the boards go up and I'm walking off and of course the abuse yeah. that I was getting for the uh, Rangers players, never mind the supporters. And uh, it was Ray Farningham that, that uh, scored the goal, we beat them 1-0, but <laughs> we really stole it that day, but great, great memory. People love to hear what goes on in the background? Ross in LA is off and on. He loves to hear these stories from <laughs> your mouths. If from... you if you start jogging, I'm going to find you a week's wages. He, 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 he would have. He would have without a shadow, yeah. wouldn't he? Oh, he would have. Tommy used to say if he was complaining about what was in the paper, but it's no you. It's your paper. He wasn't happy with you, Mark. You know. <laughs> oh, <I, laughs> yeah, Martin and Neil talking about you this morning oh. about the media and stuff. He said I got on well with them now, but I had my moments when I was manager of Celtic, and I thought of you when he sat yeah. in that chair, face to face with yeah, you. With so, a few with yep. a few but uh, what, and a lot of the, the managers most of them and Paul and certainly Matt Mayo, if you asked him something he, he was always honest and that's all you could ask for I think I, I mean I would yeah. say just to finish on Tommy yeah. McLean I would not have had a career mm. without him Brilliant. his uh, his teaching his coaching on the training ground he taught me so much and always grateful for it and he was some player as well before my time but at Kilmarnock and Rangers he was a, a really really great player for Motherwell, did they have a claim of a penalty at one point as well during the match? Just before half time, there was an incident. Um, some Motherwell fans have been asking about it. We'd have to look at it again. Was it the one where Slattery yeah, was going through with Tavernier? Yes, that's right. I, I don't know Tavernier. if it was inside the box, but it was given just as a foul, and I think yeah. it was. <laughs> I think it was very dubious. Let's just say that. Okay. Could have gone either way, yeah. and they, they, they would have been in for a, a really good goal scoring chance. You mentioned somebody that prevented that goal, it was Jack Butland. He has been a success, I think we all agree. Listen, I think any goalkeeper in any team is allowed to make a save. I thought Liam Kelly made a couple of good saves for them as well, equal to what Jack did for us today. He came and took one in the air, which I thought was really important at the time he did. Um, 
But I think any goalie in any team is allowed to make saves. We just kept three clean sheets on the bounce, so that's a positive. When you're not playing well, he, he's needed more than what I'd want him to be needed, is the, is the way to answer that. Yeah, Jack Butland. Yeah, yeah, he's been great. You know, um, you know, big gloves to fill, and he's already shown that he's more than capable of of, of doing it. And, and you know, first time yesterday, Paul, uh, early on when Rangers lost possession, twenty five, thirty yards for goals. I think Slattery had a shot just a yard wide. That was the first time I could really see Jack Butland getting angry. He's obviously he'd, he'd snapped. He's normally very calm and composed, but you know, he was he was out given. Two or three the the the, the players um, his teammates pelters and um, you know but yeah he's been a he's been a top sign and absolutely no no doubts about him at all for the Munro fans who've been on there yeah it was just before half time a penalty claim James Tavernier challenge on Spencer at the far post Theo Blair had flicked on a spittle cross just as you mentioned but referee Alan Muir he wasn't interested uh, nor was Andrew Dallas on the VAR so. Nothing to see here. But Motherwell came really, really close. Is that the first away defeat for the manager? I think it is in the league um, since it, he came. It, Certainly it's yeah, been an amazing it might well be. Yeah. yeah, it might well be. Yeah, a, a, a terrific record and, um, you know, in, in terms of the league. Uh, Where are they going to finish, to, Mark? To, to Saturday. For you, so... Andy I, 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 I like really Hibs. Tough. You know, I didn't see yeah. Hibs doing it now with, with Nick Montgomery coming in. I, I like the look of them. Um, I think Motherwell... Can be top six, but I think it would be six at best. That's it. Well, that would do, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, it would, yeah. Yeah. It would take yeah. that. It would take that. And I think For financially, sure. it means a lot. You're obviously getting a, a game or two at home against Celtic, Rangers, Hearts, Hibs, you know, large travelling support. That's what you want. What about your old team, St Mirren? Are they going to be top six? Second top of the table. Certainly. certainly yeah. look, you, you always think, obviously, Celtic and Rangers are, are gimmies. Yeah. You, you always can expect Hearts and Hibs, but you know, don't know about about Hearts, Aberdeen still to climb the table. Um, so it, it's open, and the way St. Mirren have started, Paul, they've got rhythm, they've got momentum, they're keeping clean sheets, they're scoring goals, a real confidence, good crowds at Paisley as well, which is brilliant. You know, it's good Seller, to see. It? Yeah, great to see it bouncing um, as well. So no, St. Mirren will take a St. Mirren will definitely take a bit of shifting. You would I, I would take St. Mirren absolutely yeah, top six. Yeah, I would agree with that. If they keep up this run of form, uh, they'll be in the Champions League. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. Yep. Celtic uh, defending champions on 16 points after this first six games. St Mirren on 14, Rangers on 12, and then Motherwell two behind on 10. Uh, Hibs and Hearts and Ross County on 7, and then Kilmarnock on 6, along with Dundee and Livingston. Aberdeen on five and St Johnson on two. They're beginning to get anchored down there, and there's a danger they're getting isolated. Yeah, it's not been good enough so far this season for uh, St Johnston. Paul and Stephen McLean will, will know that. You know he's honest, and he'll need to start picking up results. Players will need to do um, better. Um, looks as though there's a lack of confidence um, at the moment, which is understandable when you're not uh, winning games. But they'll they'll need to get it going quickly. I think they play Livingston on Saturday. Um, at Perth that's probably one that, that St Johnson need to win and of course um, and they both could do with it couldn't they I see Livy have got a new owner in town um, yeah. for St Johnson do you worry for them even this early in the season yep yeah, I, I mean the last couple of years I've got to be honest I've I've tipped them to finish in the bottom two and they've shown well they've shown me up to be a horrible tipster because they, they've, they've done so well but I mean I think now uh, the change of manager I think there was already problems there just towards the end of uh, Callum Davidson's reign and um, they're just trying to try new things, bringing in new players. It's really tough. Again, it's another club with very modest uh, resources and um, I, I think this might be the season where they'll finish in one of the bottom two places. Jacqueline's been on the socials at Go Football Show, says, Andy, you were at uh, Aberdeen yesterday. So yeah. Blackpool Saturday and then Aberdeen yesterday. What about Johnny Hayes? Came on as a sub. I mean, what a uh, player. I, I, I thought you were yeah. going to say, what, what about your mileage claim? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I you were going to say. 45 <laughs> PM mile. Yeah. I spoke to Johnny after the game because there was an incident during the match where he was tackled I by uh, James to. Brown. Yeah. yeah. And he got... Uh, he didn't James, feel good after that, did James he? Brown got a yeah. yellow, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, you could see the stud marks, which was uh, you know just above uh, Johnny's knee, and he was hobbling as he as he left the ground. But um, I don't, I, even he said he, he didn't expect a red card. But he said he, James Brown certainly left his mark. And what about Johnny Hayes? What a career he's had! Brilliant, great pro, yeah. 
And you know, he was a sub yesterday. Magari pulled yeah. his hamstring yeah. after about five minutes, and Johnny Hayes came on and uh, set up one of the goals. In fact, it was McGrath's goal when he uh, got the diagonal pass through to Mayovsky and he squared it for a tap in. But just in general, his level of performance when he's in the team, I think he's a bit like Graham Shinney. He's got this great drive. He, he can carry the ball 30, 40 yards, take you from a defensive part of the, the game into the, the attacking third. He's, he's still got it. He's a, a brilliant professional. Somebody that's got every ounce out of you. Know, he's maximised his potential. He's worked ever so hard. You know, a really good spell at Celtic as well. Did they low not let him go too quickly? It possibly did, yeah. yeah, on the left-hand side. you know, Low maintenance, just a good pro that won't cause the manager a problem, except if he's no starting, he's no starting. Getting on a bit in years now, but still a really good guy. Uh, to have a have about the place, yeah, absolutely brilliant. It was some tackle, wasn't it? I saw oh, the stud one. It, yeah, well, that was a proper one. That oh, uh, you could feel that one. Should we look forward to the games tomorrow and Wednesday? League Cup next. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Ten percent off your solar install in September. Terms and conditions apply. Let's go. This time tomorrow night, it's going to be Craig Moore, the former Rangers and Australian star, also Newcastle United. Uh, where else was he? Borussia Munchen Gladbach, Palace. Crystal Palace. Yeah, yeah. the Palace. Uh, and also Peter Grant, your old teammate. Peter Grant will be with us. The show is going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we're all going out Thursday night, I believe, yeah? Off yeah. to the opera yeah. or something? He's not coming, is he? Yeah. Yeah. Is that a black tie? A black tie? <laughs> Probably, yeah. So we'll be there on... Thursday night. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be some week. Ryder Cup this weekend as oh, well, Andy. Love it. You love it, Mark, as well. Love the Solheim Cup over oh, the weekend. Oh, Tremendous. Yeah. Well, well done. We got the draw. So after, we retained. After getting beat 4 0 in the yeah. first session, we got yeah. it We got it back. Tremendous. Well done. Down there near Malaga, Andy, an area I know you love Fantastic. down towards Estepona. Yeah. Muy bonita, oh, eh? Estepona. Haven't Fantastic. played that course, but it looked beautiful. Oh. Yep. I mean, I'll check out a nice few places to go on holiday yeah. down there as well uh-huh. just, bef- just before San Pedro San Pedro was it beautiful yeah. yep Takes San Pedro last night yeah. I dreamt of yeah, indeed you did thank you Madonna <laughs> 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 he was more Madonna than Maradona <laughs> no no not, not at all Andy <laughs> Andy Walker with us you're not the first to have said that I know it's terrible isn't it <laughs> And thanks a few people come on there like the James Brown one. Yeah. And Johnny hates jazz. No, that was completely different. Right. Um, what about the, the championship? What a win for Air United, or put it another way, Queen's Park. Bad result on Friday night, Andy, which kicked off the weekend. 5 2. Didn't uh, see that coming. I home. thought Queen's Park yeah. were beginning to motor, but a great result for Air United, who have been really struggling. It's hard, as it normally is, to pick a winner out of that league I mean Inverness who got through the playoffs last season they're they're struggling obviously have uh, sacked their manager and it seems to be you know Dunfermline Wraith Rovers and obviously Dundee United with their with our budget with their squad and getting a a last kick of the ball winner up at mm-hmm. Inverness at the weekend and sometimes it's that luck you need sorry Mark no, yeah. just, who, who do you yeah. fancy you got Randy who's your, who's Dundee your United yeah, yeah I'm a saying, yeah, 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 but I mean I've not seen them yet. I was talking to one of the uh, you and Graham yesterday about it. He was seeing the air. He said, "So entertaining to watch." Ah, yeah, you know, really entertaining. That Reese McCabe, think that bit yeah. about him. We just go, you know, and uh, they go on with it. And what a brilliant result! Because well, sure. Wraith Rovers have been flying. Yeah. So terrific result. And I was on with James McPeg a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. He's quite happy with the squad he's got, and they had a good result at the weekend. Who did they beat? Did they beat Morton? Morton three one. Yeah. 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 That's so, what I was about to ask you. Yeah. Dunfermline could be the surprise package. Only yeah, they've got a good support. They've yeah. got a support who will just grow and grow if they keep winning games, get themselves into a, at least a playoff spot. And I think I think they're capable of it. Just looking at some of the media today, the other scores: Patrick Thistle losing three 0 I should say that home to our broth. Vic Campbell's That's, incredible. I know, Absolutely but the other way, incredible. as a Glasgow station, yeah. you do worry though for the <laughs> Jags, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's. You know, they, they did a good win um, at Air United the, the, yeah. the week before. So I think, sure. you know, these things will happen, Paul, Chris Sterling and the squad. You'll, you know, you're never going to go 20, 25 games, you know, unbeaten or whatever. You're always going to have a, a couple of hiccups and they're both the kind of team that can do that to you. Especially Dick Campbell going back to this. So I think he felt as though he was treated badly there. Maybe yeah. not got the respect that he thought he was due, but... Yeah, great win for them. And, you know, I'm, I look at Thistle and when I saw them last season in the playoffs... I thought I thought that was the end. They were so close, and had they got promotion, who knows? They would have they'd have could, uh, gone on and you know done a something like Dundee are do, uh, doing just now, just holding their own in the top flight. They've lost a couple of players now: Tiffany Turner, yeah. 
um, I can't see them getting close to where they were last season. And back to the Premiership. Uh, a few people have been on saying, what's your opinion about Joe Hart? It's not a go at Joe Hart. It's about the way keepers have to play the ball out from the back. It's, you know, the way Guardiola did it. It did for Joe down there at Man City those years ago. And the fact, uh, Bill Lick has got a column on it today. I know, in, that, in I know that Mark yeah. likes to look at uh, goalkeepers a bit more closely given his uh, position there. But if he stays on his line, if he doesn't come for that, I think there's still so much for Sangari to do. I think Liam Scales would have been there. And so often you, you, you see goalkeepers sweeping up, you know, 20, 30, 40 yards from, from their own goal. But had he decided to stay, I don't think he's scoring from there. He might have a shot on the bounce, but I think he would still have to beat a defender to get in on, uh, on Joe Hart. I mean, if you look at where, where the, the ball is delivered from, pretty much the halfway line, so his starting point would have probably been 12 yards. So his decision is, do I go six to the end of the box or do I retreat mm. to my six-yard line? And nine times out of ten now, because of the, the pressure that's on goalkeepers to be sweeper keepers, you're going to come. That's what it came down to. It was a bad decision. That was his decision. What and did that, I do? And he's made the wrong call. But the thing about goalkeepers now, Paul, particularly down south, he's possession-based head coaches. Yeah. Goalkeepers now, most coaches are picking goalkeepers based on their ability to play football Rather than the ability to keep the ball out of the net, yeah. which for me I kind of get my head round, but that's the way it is now. Yeah. It's yeah. your your feet you, is more than your hands. Well, yeah. to me, goalkeeping's yeah. all. I absolutely get it. You need to be able to be comfortable with with the ball at your feet, but you need athleticism. You need agility. You need that habit of making big saves at an important moment in the match to to give your team the basis to maybe go on and and get a one 0 victory. Who's the best keeper, would you say, you played with, Andy, over the years? I played with a couple of good yeah. Irish ones. Packy Bonner, Alan Kelly at yeah. uh, Sheffield United. Mm -hmm. He was uh, top class, so I would probably edge uh, Big Packy. I thought he had... Uh, although all, I'm still all, always on at him for his... He never saved one penalty in the 1990 Scottish Cup final shootout. And then he goes to the World oh. Cup and he's the hero because he saves a penalty. <laughs> he happens. dives the wrong way every time in the Cup final. Jeez, against oh. Aberdeen? Against yeah. Aberdeen. Not that you're uh, holding that grudge against the big man. Never let him forget uh, it. Mark, you've seen so many keepers. You, that yeah. was your position. Yeah. Uh, uh, who's the one you would choose? If I, I'll put you in the spot. What, right, the right the best keeper you've... Yeah, at the moment. Who would you say is the best uh, keeper? Uh, 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 I like Alisson. Yeah, mm -hmm. Liverpool. Yeah. If I was choose one, and sure. I do like Nick Pope mm -hmm. as well. I would have Nick Pope was England number one, but I do like um, Alison and, and, and going back, you know, thirty, forty years. But I love Neville Southall. And he yeah, said, said, I remember you said that. Yeah, Everton. I loved, I loved Neville Southall. Yeah. Just even just his his appearance, his warm ups. He was a oh, the warm ups. He was it was mad even at the warm ups. And, and what a great Everton team um, he played in. So yeah, I really liked him. Packy would have really struggled in today's game if you had to use the ball at your feet. I mean, he was he was hopeless with the, the ball at his feet. <laughs> Great goalkeeper, <laughs> but could he kick it? it get him on, get him on to see what he thinks about Andy. Exactly. <laughs> Next, we're going to Newton Mearns. <laughs> Let's talk about Granny. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, right, what about tomorrow? Kilmarnock against Hearts. You know, we mentioned Hearts, but the other thing Andy is for Kilmarnock, I mean, this is a huge game for Derek McInnes he'd be disappointed to lose uh, you know the goal late the, the weekend mm -hmm. away from home that would have been three points cup success how much would he love that and how much does he feel he could do so, something with Kilmarnock this season well I think he'll certainly have a bit of belief he'll know that every single player will have to be at their best Hearts I think I've got a better squad they've got better players but it's how you handle the pressure of being a Hearts player where the the level of expectation is so high. The supporters, I think a bit like the Rangers fans, they're not happy with the team at the moment. They expect to go to Paisley. They expect to win. They expect a better level of performance and they didn't get it. So um, I think Kilmarnock could do that tomorrow night. So I'm going to go for the home side. What yeah, do you feel? I think it's a yeah. togetherness out of Kilmarnock that will just yeah. give them the... I agree with Andy. On paper, parts have got a much stronger squad and, and so they... They should have for their budget, but I think there's a, you know, yeah, I'm going to go Kilmarnock after extra time tomorrow night. Reading Graham McGarry today in the Herald, and he's saying that teams have their number. They've got the hearts. They know the way they play. They've got a lot of possession. They failed to score in four of their last six Premiership, well, the six Premiership matches, despite dominating possession in all of them. And Lauren Shanklin, I'm not 
picking mm. him out, but he was so good last season. He had a chance the other day. It's just not happening for them. And for Stephen Naismith, I mean, the thing with Frankie McAvoy, who's the manager and all this, that doesn't help you, does it? No, that, that, that kind of confusion should have been handled a lot better. You know, obviously they had to do it. A to comply with EFA re regularly, yeah. but they made an absolute hash of it. I mean, they, they just... They, create, they, they created a drama that didn't need to exist um, with that. But um, Stephen A. Smith back to Kilmarnock, a place he knows well, obviously, where he started yeah. his, his career. But, you know, one time we're going to find out about the Hearts players tomorrow. Um, are they in it? Are they with the manager? If they are, I think they'll do it. If there's the slightest doubt, Kilmarnock will take advantage. Because they've got Dingwall after that, Ross County. Edinburgh Derby and Hibs is, look it could go either way but Hibs are so up for it at the moment with the new manager Celtic and then Rangers doesn't get any tougher than that Andy does it? No it doesn't and uh, I think what a boost it would be to get through uh, that tie for either uh, Kilmarnock or Hearts but um, yeah looking forward to the one on Wednesday Hibs and Mirren that will also yeah. be a really uh, I mean so impressed with St Mirren the amount of points that they've gained already and I think there has been a lift in performance at Hibs since Nick Montgomery came in they were th probably threw away two points at Kilmarnock when they were 2-0 up yeah. got a, Kelly got a 2-2 two -two draw but uh, beating St Johnston at uh, the weekend and I think the supporters are certainly getting behind the new manager who he's just got a better way of communicating than Lee Johnson did so in Kelly Hearts did you go for I went for Kelly going for Kelly Hibs St Mirren who are you going to be reporting on I'm going on to edge it on Hibs just because okay. of the home form the home support and uh, I think they've got maybe one or two better potential match winners okay. Mark what do you feel yeah I fancy Hibs I think mm -hmm. that's the I think that will turn out to be the best game of midweek I'm going to go Hibs to beat St Mirren 3-2 okay. a really entertaining game and Kelly Hearts Come on, excuse me come on after extra time 2-1 right ok you got a wee cough there after uh, I think hey. being at the at the races a wee cough I, thought, oh, 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 oh. I thought you had a few bob over there in the wallet <laughs> the moth came good out good wee day a, good wee yeah, day good day Ross County Aberdeen is that a well it was a yeah. it was a mismatch mm -hmm. yesterday 4-0 for Aberdeen could have been a bit more I thought Ross County started well maybe 10-15 minutes but apart from that uh, it was a day to forget for them uh, you've got a fancy Aberdeen on that form and in Duke and Miofsky I think they've got a strike force that are really hard working they want to score goals they got good service uh, yesterday they're beginning to to have some options coming off the bench I'm going to go for an Aberdeen one going for the Dons yeah uh, Paul if you asked me yesterday yeah. morning before that game Petodia yeah. was fancying Ross County I really was to, to win in midweek take home advantage but looking at the 90 minutes yesterday yeah, credit to Barry Robson and his players. There's that together in the cell that I'm talking about. And uh, it'll be tight, but Aberdeen will edge it. And Livingston coming to town. They'll be at Ibrox on Wednesday night. Eight o'clock kick-off for this one. The others are 7.45. Rangers against Livy. Let's hear the manager from the weekend. It was a win. It's hard to remember that, given some of the fans weren't happy with him and some of his comments. It was the latest on Matondo and Lawrence. Some thought he had cramp wanted to continue uh, in the game, but we didn't take a risk. The next day, he woke up and couldn't walk and he's gone for a scan, so Tom won't play this side of the international duty. Has a problem with his calf. Obviously, with the international break, it sounds like it's longer because obviously that's a two-week breakout, so he'll return with Todd, Nico, Danilo. Kieran might be back in the middle of the week to play at the weekend, but obviously he's lacking in a bit of fitness. And then uh, Rabi today... We think that might be a bad one. He's took a blow on the outside of his knee. Um, I need to see it back, but just before coming in, that's the information I was given. Andy, what are you thinking? Rabbi Matondo has been one of the brighter spots for him this season. Yeah, he has come on in different games and shown a bit of pace. He's shown a bit of um, finishing quality. So I thought the finish at uh, St Johnston was really good. The way that he played in the European fixture w was really good. Um, I can only see Rangers winning it. They've got to be able to handle that pressure. I think the, the interesting question will be how pleased will the Rangers supporters be uh, with the level of performance that they see from the from the team because that's where you, you can sense all the anger is coming from. They're not being entertained at all. They would love a goal fest against Livy. Do you think it will happen? Uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't happen, Paul. I, I just to go back. I feel for Tom Lawrence, you know, really good player but it's been horrible horrible run uh, of bad luck with injuries because he's, he's a talent and he can make Rangers tick there's no doubt about that but he's not going to be available you need to get on with it big squad so you just crack on 
Um, and Rangers should win. Bottom line, Paul, whether you get booed at the end or not, just win the game. It's a chance to get in a cup semi final, get to Hamden, and a step closer to winning a trophy, which Rangers and Michael ba- uh, Michael Beale badly need. So just go and win the game. But yeah, to be honest, I think Rangers will bounce back. I think they'll win 3 0. Mark, thanks for joining us. See you later in the week. Andy, maybe hear from you ahead of the game at Easter Road Bravos. on Wednesday <laughs> yeah. and tomorrow night. As I mentioned, Peter Grant will be here with myself, Paul Cooney, and also Craig Moore. Coming up after the news, it's Zoe Kelly. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. 10% off your solar install in September. Terms and conditions apply. Let's go! Looking to reduce your energy bills? Global Eco Energy install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial and public sector customers with a wide range of renewable energy products including solar PV, battery storage and air source heat pumps we offer bespoke solutions for a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options go to global-eco.co.uk and quote Solar 10 for 10% off your installation available until 30th September 2023 